What's up everybody, my name is Vince, welcome to the channel, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about a pretty cool tool accessory. How do I know it's cool? Well, quite frankly, I really, I don't know that it's cool just yet, but in a previous video, we showed you this cool tool, okay? It's in a shear attachment for DeWalt and a couple other drills, but it's a shear attachment. If you wanted to find out more about this cool tool, this is pretty cool. I know it for a fact, because I use it. Go on over to this video here, check it on out. But a lot of you in the comments section of that video said to us, that's not new. Malco has been making a shear attachment for years and years and years. And what we said was, oh yeah, do you use it? You like it? And a lot of you said, oh, I don't know. I only seen it in pictures online. I've never used it. So today, we're gonna let everybody see how the Malco Turbo Shear TS1 performs. And it's coming right up after this word from our sponsor. Around these parts, VCG construction, we're known for our head-to-head uh, -head competitions, our tool test raw. This isn't really a head-to-head -head competition. This is literally curiosity. We saw this online, okay? And after your comments, we went looking for it, and we, we saw the price of it, and we're like, hey, is it a viable alternative, the Malco, to the DeWall? I believe it was right around the this was around the $40 mark. Now there are other variations, and I wanna get this unboxed. I'm gonna use my Para 3 from Spyderco. Awesome knife, use it every day. A lot of people have been asking for a link to buy this. There might be one down in the description below. Go check it out. So we opened the box, and we're met with a whole bunch of bubble wrap. I love this stuff, bubble wrap, awesome. And then the Malco shear, pretty cool. Let's see if it comes with any instructions. It comes with something here. It says, thank you for your recent purchase. Made it in the USA Malco. Work, perform, outlast. It has a limited lifetime warranty, which is pretty cool. Now, it says capacity, 20 gauge steel. And when we do a lot of metal framing, we, we use 20 gauge studs. So this might come in handy for that. We're gonna find out. It says operating instructions. Now it says use minimum quarter inch, 1200 RPM AC or cordless drill. Cuts 20 gauge galvanized steel or other common sheet metals. Blind cuts require only a half of an inch. Starting hole, long lasting blade and replaceable. So you can get replacement blades for this. There are some pictures Okay, it, it has you inserting this shear into the chuck of a drill. Pretty much, they want you to use any brand you like. You can see this looks green like Makita, this looks red like Milwaukee, this looks like green like Makita, and that looks like yellow like the wall. So they're, what's that word? Agnostic? Agnostic. Leave, leave it down below if that's the word. I believe it's agnostic. They're brand agnostic. If you want to find out more about them, after this video, go on over to malcotools.com. Now, here's the deal. It would work, it looks like it would work with a quarter inch impact. It will lock in. Here's the deal with it though. They don't recommend a quarter inch impact. So we're gonna use a drill. I will say this. The shearing head does look kind of small, but you know, what can you do? It says on the back here, read instructions for safe operation. Okay, so we're gonna throw it instead on our M12 Gen 2 hammer drill. Okay, the only dilemma I'm seeing here is that the Malco Well, let me, you know, let me not speak too quick. Let's, let's just give it a try first, okay? 
going to spin this around and we're going to cut along our line on our sheet steel here. Now it says to use it at 1200 RPMs, I believe it was. Our Gen 2 M12 runs at top speed in speed two at 1700. It says 1200 or above. So we can go full bore. You just gonna to wanna to make sure you have enough RPM, I suppose. Good job, it was fairly quick. Now, you know, a lot of um, you know, AC techs would most likely use this to you know, do a cutout for a collar or an opening, maybe in the side of a unit, I, you know, all kinds of stuff. It says that you only need a half of an inch clearance to get this tool in there. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut out a circle. We're gonna start in the center of the sheet. Now, Malco says all you need to get started is a half inch hole. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use our <laughs> impact hole saws from Milwaukee. These are made for metal. If you wanna find out more about these impact hole saws, go to this video here. What we're going to do is we're going to drill our little hole. Boom. We have our little, our little pilot hole. I will say this. Our scrap metal didn't eject out of there. But as you can see, we can get pretty much right in there. Now, I don't want this thing to move around too much. And of course, if, you know, if this was square ducks or something, it probably wouldn't be moving around. I'll just lay my elbow on it. the sheet down so we wouldn't have any movement. The reality is if I was on the job site, I probably would do the old throw your leg up on top of it. You know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. say this, cut a fairly, fairly nice hole, okay? You could, if you needed to, uh, you know, I don't know, like if you were gonna use it for maybe, you know, something outside of you know, HVAC, let's just say you were gonna use it for arts and crafts. You, you could like use it to cut. <laughs> use it to cut squiggly lines. So if you wanted to maybe, I don't know, Let's say you're a DIYer, you're gonna use sheet steel to make lettering or something on a sign. You could possibly use this. I feel like there's only one issue with this tool and it, quite frankly, it could be a plus or a minus. Um, this is a two-handed affair, okay? You need to use this tool with two hands because it doesn't have any attachment points to the tool itself to hold it. You need to hold this tool, okay? 
that that's kind of a minus, I guess, with with when you're cutting maybe straight lines. I don't know. I feel like because the tool does have two-handed operation though, it might work better for making things like circles. Okay, uh, you know, I think it all depends. I feel like you probably could use this tool as well, I mean, you know. But is it easier to make those, those circle cuts with this tool because the head does spin? You do use two hands, you know, I don't know. That's my, uh, that's my feeling. This could be a plus or a minus. Let us know down and below. Do you like the two hand operation or do you think this should be attached to the tool? Now, here's the deal. Malco makes another version of this super shear that actually does have attachment to the tool. Here's where the problem lies with that. That tool attachment accessory is upwards of $100. It's $100 and maybe $20. Now, does that mean it's a bad tool? No. Does that mean it's a bad tool accessory? Not at all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that at that point, if you're spending $120, in my opinion, you'd be probably better served by going out and buying a dedicated power shear. That's how I feel about it. Now, how can I justify that? A power shear is probably in the $200, $220, $40 range. I mean, look at it this way. I mean, if you wanted to buy that power shear attachment that has attachment points, you're at 120 bucks for that. Even the cheapest drill, you know, let's just say you went with a compact drill. $99 or $100 for that drill. You're still at the 220 mark for the tool. I would prefer to spend that money on a dedicated shear at that point. And if you like having the right tool for the job, then smash the like button. Also, leave it down in the comments section below. Do you have the super shear from Malco? What do you think about products from Malco? Do you like them? Do you dislike them? Do you think there's no reason for power shears or power shear attachments or tool accessories? Should you cut everything by hand? Do you think maybe I should have just folded this over, you know, you know, hit it with a utility knife and then wiggled it back and forth until it snapped? Let us know down in the comments section below. You know, quite frankly, you're not gonna use a utility knife to, you know, score that and then snap a hole out of it. I mean, and if you can do that, we want to see a video, tag us in it. With that, I want to say I appreciate each and every one of you being here. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you all on the next one. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're going to get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy. And you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications throw. What? You're not subscribed yet. Well, smash this button here. After that, Watch this video here, here, and maybe over here.